So when we left off, you guys had arrived on the second layer of Elysium, layer called Erroneous, where the first layer is very uh, pastoral and has a lot of fields, meadows, and lush forests. The second layer is much more rugged and mountainous. So what we're going to do first is everybody go ahead and take the benefits of a long rest. I'd love oh. to. And then everybody not. make a wisdom save, DC 10. I'd love to. Hey, I did it. I'm, I'm pretty sure mine now. is plus three of it. Just... Oh, no, I'm pushing all saves. It's plus eight now. Oh, sorry, I stole the die. Okay. Oh, yeah. <gasps> okay. Who rolled the one? Do, do, do we have a one? Oh, there is I'm a one. I'm seeing a one. I failed, but I didn't get the one. So we have two. So it was Liberation and Nath? No, I rolled a nat 20. Oh, okay. So the, the one's just sitting there? It's just sitting there, apparently. I mean, there aren't too many dice on the table, so that that's, makes that's sense. That's true. <laughs> we do have... So We have more um, dice than players. We have, we've been playing for five minutes. I have five <laughs> players, and there are already seven d20s on the table. So I rolled two dice. Okay. I'm going to tell you why. Because I'm pretty sure Brickroad has forgotten that I have a third flaw that he hasn't been invoking. A third flaw, eh? I can't take anything seriously. The more serious it is, the funnier I find it. I do not remember that. When did I? When, I when did that happen? I, you make me. You make me roll a d twenty, and if I roll a twenty, then I have to invoke that flaw. Okay. I have no recollection of this. Oh, that was I'm when sure he got the uh, the demon the demon information in his brain. Yeah. Oh, that's right. So that's why I got, that's why I passed the wisdom saving roll and I have the eight, but I don't know where that one came from. Okay. <laughs> All right. No, absolutely not. We're not going to clean up the table every five minutes. Okay. <laughs> so those of you who failed the saving throw, uh, when you wake up the next morning and continuing on your journey through the rugged terrain of Elysium, you're overcome with just this very hard to shake sense of contentedness. You've never felt more peaceful or at home on any plane during any of your travels. Uh, and mechanically, you will not leave Elysium unless forced to. And we heard this got fixed by greater restoration. Or you just drag them off the plane. Right. If you fail that save three times, then it becomes a permanent trait. Otherwise, you can just continue to make that save on a long rest. So what is your general strategy for, like, say, crossing gorges or climbing up steep cliffs, etc., as a group? Everybody stares at liberation. <laughs> <laughs> um, do a lot of this still have all those? No, I don't think everyone has all that climbing gear that we got that one time, from that one time on Mount Elysium. No, I, 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 I ditched that stuff. Yeah. yeah, I think I lost it. I mean, I can make some number of us fly if it becomes an issue. Yeah, and I'm willing to carry someone as a giant eagle. And you can stay in that giant eagle form for like five for, six a, hours. For like a, a significant amount of time, yeah. <laughs> That's weird, huh? <laughs> hey, Mahogany. Yeah. Could you... Are you leading the group at this point? Are you the one like doing the navigation? Uh, I'm not really navigating. So if everyone's listening to me, I'm mostly just pointing forward and going. Um, right, right, okay. But you are... Um, yeah. Could you maybe bring us on a... Uh, Divert our path a little bit so we could head through one of those cipher encampments or whatever you call them so that I could maybe get new staff. I gave my spell focus to Aunt Nancy, and while I'm fine with just my components, I feel a little bit better having a focus in hand. Mahogany shrugs and says, if we're meant to get there, we will. Don't worry. <laughs> so let's turn it over to Nath then. Because on Elysium, you don't get where you're going by putting one foot in front of the other. That's part of it, but it's not the only part. 
The other part is you have to commit good deeds along the way. You have to show the plane that you deserve to get where you're going by doing good things. So how does that manifest? What does Nath do to attempt to come across one of these settlements if that's where he wants to go? I mean, are there any... I mean, we both know the book gives you a lot of really stupid things you can do, like helping along somebody pushing a cart. Well, let's start here. What's Nath? What is Nath doing as far as uh, benefiting the group during your travels? Uh, Don't well, say Cassie on... Morton kind of private to thank them every five minutes. <laughs> well, I believe he's on mansion duty tonight. Uh, he always takes a watch. Uh, more than happy to make people fly to get over the can canyons and crevasses and whatnot. Okay. You don't come across any villages or settlements. Most of those kind of things would have been up on the first layer. But every so often you find yourselves having to cross or recross the River Oceanus as it, uh, it still dominates this layer of the plain. And what you're managed to come across is what looks like a trading vessel. Just a large skiff with a little uh, hut on the back with some cloth pulled over it to protect slightly from the elements. And several large men are pulling it down the side of the river near to the bank. And they're coming in your direction. You're managed to flag them down. And they are indeed traders. So what is it you're looking to purchase? Just a basic spellcaster staff. And what do you uh, offer in trade? Gold, or if they need a minor service, we are in a bit of a... We are traveling, though. If there's something else that they need that's either pressing or quick, I would be more than happy to aid them. And Mahogany, when, when he says pressing or quick, Mahogany waves his hand. He says, no, anything you need, we can help you out. <laughs> So what is something that Nath could do or provide for these people that would put him out a little bit? Hey, one more second here. Like a spell that would actually take up resources or yeah, take up significant over. time. I mean, I could uh, identify any equipment that you've found along your journey that you need to... Uh, that you're interested in selling, or I could... I don't have a mirror. Most of my other defensive spells don't last long enough. I could put a magic circle on your boat. It'd last for about a day, I think. How long does it take for Nath to, cost to cast Identify? The uh, rituals are ten minutes. My book's on the other side of the room. This might be noisy. Okay. Ten minutes are rituals, yeah. Ten minutes plus yeah. whatever you're... Uh, right. Normal. As it happens, they have a whole bag filled with trinkets that they suspect are magical. And they would love it if you could identify them for them. I've got one pearl on me, but I can detect magic to find if there's anything in there. And then if oh, there's yeah. more than one, we'd have to pick. You detect yeah. magic, and absolutely everything in this bag is magical. <laughs> and when they upend it, it's just little trinkets. Things like uh, the kinds of things you dredge up in a fishing man, in a fisher's net. But there, there are knives, there's small knives and coins, a lot of seashells. But all of them are giving off. Uh, residual traces of magic. And these two men are very interested to hear what you have to say about them. Um, I only have one pearl on me, but I'd be more than happy if there's any particular item here that you'd be interested in learning about. Okay, so they take out one of the uh, larger shells, a large conch that's in particularly good condition, and they set it down, and they're very interested to hear about this. I'll go ahead and cast a identify on it. And... After you do, it's not a magic item per se. It's not going to do anything. It's just having laid in the banks of the River Oceanus for many centuries, it's just dredged up a lot of planner magic as the river connects many of the upper plains together. And this is your conclusion throughout most of the rest of the items in the bag as well. The magic is residual. Um, it might be useful as a component or to certain types of wizards for certain types of spells. But there are no direct effects that you would be able to use from it. They asked what you suppose something like this would fetch on an open market in Sigil. In Sigil? Um, I mean, they're not particularly uncommon. 
Uh, can I make an Arcana check to figure out if there's any like anything that you could use this for in place of a normal like costed spell component? Sure, go ahead. What are the rest of you doing over the course of like the three hours or so where Nap has you waylaid while he's going through this <laughs> bag of stuff? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I, I will. I'll, I'm, I'm, I'll just play a few songs for the travelers just to keep them entertained. Okay. Mahogany is trying to carve a spell focus for Nath, but he accidentally keeps making druid spell focuses. <laughs> <laughs> Say uh, 17 on Arcana. Okay. Uh, trinkets like this would, in Sigil, I mean, you buy them as a curiosity. It's the rough equivalent of, like, say, going to a gift shop in the country and buying, like, an old arrowhead or something. Uh, if they were willing to lie about what it is and really dress it up and be snake oil salesmen, they could get a lot more money for it. Between a silver and a gold, depending on who's buying. So you go ahead and they they make the trade for the spell focus. They load you guys down with uh, fresh fish that they've caught out of the river from this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And everybody leaves the encounter more enriched than they were. That was good work, Nath. We'll get there in no time. On into that evening. Uh, are you doing any scouting, Mahogany, or are you just keeping with the group? Mahogany's just keeping with the group because he figures scouting is pointless. Okay. The next major feature that you see off on the horizon in the direction where Mahogany is leading you is he seems to be leading you to the edge of a cliff, a gorge much wider and deeper than the ones that you've traversed so far. The difference is there seems to be a footbridge leading across it. And there's also a great dark storm overhead, just pouring wind and water down in there and as you get closer to this gorge you all start to get wet as well uh y'all want to see if we can do away with the storm i think mrs fluffy bottom would appreciate that <laughs> i'm assuming she's just digging her talons into me as she gets more and more wet if she gets wet i don't know it's, maybe the rain's bouncing off her <laughs> did you give her any of those fish of course i did all right then the right we'll cast control weather okay are you doing this as you had to be doing this out of the trident yes yeah it's the only way i've got it make a wisdom arcana check okay or wisdom religion whichever you have that's higher let me check the scores real quick Yeah, I think that'd be religion then. Uh, this is a 16. 16. Go ahead and expend the charges for the spell. Mm -hmm. It has no effect on this storm. And okay. the only way that's possible is if the storm itself is a manifestation of similar magic. If somebody more powerful than you had called the storm here. I see. Mm. It might be the plane. We might be near a good deed. Keep out, keep your eyes focused, guys. Look for anyone that looks sad. <laughs> I could let me I'm, try a dis let me go ahead and try a dispel on it then. At what level Rises. are you casting? I'm a Third. little bit sad. Okay, go ahead and make a spell casting roll. Uh, up to level twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> That's your specific wizard of school ability, right? That you get to add yeah, I get, here. I get plus my, I think, intelligence on it. Yeah. So Nath gets out his new shiny spell focus that he just yep. bought off some off some uh, hillbilly rivermen on Elysium. <laughs> Cast to spell magic, and the storm parts in front of him. And over the course of the next 30 or 40 seconds, clears. The sky becomes bright and clear once again. Exceedingly bright, 
to your eyes. Not just the standard sunlight that you've been seeing, but somewhere over the bridge is a very large source of radiance. That seems to be coalescing into a ball of color. And you watch it as it lowers itself down towards the bridge itself. Uh, is the bridge, like, rickety or anything? Or is it just... You're not close enough yet to be able to determine that. The gorge and the bridge you're seeing are just way off in the distance on the horizon. Oh, okay. Maybe a mile or more away. Let's head toward the bridge. Yeah. Look at Nav and say, you think maybe you pissed off whoever's conjuring that? If we piss someone off, then we can fix it. It's fine. (laughs) As you approach the bridge... (laughs) You start seeing on either side... I mean, it's not really a path that you're walking. You're just kind of following mahogany. So you're kind of walking through... With, for lack of a better word, it looks kind of like a cemetery. Every 30 or 40 yards, in no particular pattern or arrangement, you see what looks like a black obsidian stone just jutting up out of the ground. These aren't carved in any particular way. They just looks like just jutting teeth of rock that were placed here. Go and uh, examine some of the stones a little more closely. Okay. Smooth and very brittle and very sharp. Like, it would be very easy to chip off big pieces big pieces of this. Uh, and they, they don't look natural. I mean, what are you doing when you say you're examining them? Like, how are you examining Just kind of crouch down, look at, walking around it, looking for any kind of writing, any kind of marking on it or anything like that. There's no marking and no writing? Are you touching it or trying to manipulate it at all? No, 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 I'm not yet. Okay. Yeah, there's no markings or no writings. And there doesn't seem to be any particular pattern to how they're laid out. But there are some number of them in the area. What are they exactly, Brickard? I'm sorry. They're just, like, obsidian, just hunks of obsidian stuck down into the ground. This isn't the stuff that was glowing, though, is it? No, in fact, this is a very black stone. All right. Let's go see if we can find what was glowing. You do still see that radiance as you get closer and closer to the bridge. And, Riot, as you get closer to the bridge, uh, it looks like it's a very strong and sturdy stone bridge. Uh... That's actually supported by great buttresses underneath, going all the way down into the ravine. Liberation, you were saying? I'm gonna crush down. Does it look like uh, on on the on the ground? Does it look like that these things were placed here? Like, is there a lot of gra- uh, grass and stuff, or anything grown up around these these uh, obsidian bits? There's actually very little foliage in this area uh, altogether, which is pretty characteristic of this layer of Elysium. I mean, there's picture like desert brush in some areas. Uh, As to whether or not these were placed here, I mean, examining them, it looks like somebody had to have dug out the stone and then placed these things and sunk them down in here. Is there any... Does it look like there's any pattern, like a circle or some kind of shape that the things form? No perceivable pattern that you can see. Um, Let's see if I have Detect Magic prepared. I think I usually do. Well, I always have Detect Magic prepared. Oh, that's true, yeah. (laughs) Turning it on? Yeah, I'll turn it on. And no, these, these are not magical at all. They're just big hunks of mineral that are just placed here. No dice. Unfortunately, right? These things are not magical. Hmm. Shall we keep going, then? Yeah. Doesn't seem to be anything good we can do with them, you know? Approaching closer to the bridge, uh, the last 100 or 200 yards or so, as you get closer to the bridge, you don't see any more of these uh, chunks of obsidian littering the ground. You do, however, see... 
an elderly man, just kind of a, a pile of a man, just kind of covered in. I mean, picture the uh, the Lunarian guy from Final Fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> just all robes and hair, just like a like a like a lump of man in the road. You're not sure if he's crouching, or if he's sitting, or if he's just very very short. But his hair is a dazzling array of colors. He's got this scraggly hair coming off his head. Uh, his face is covered with beard that comes down across his chest and piles up in his his lap. Uh, a rainbow of colors. Same thing for the robes that he's wearing. I'll call out to him. Hello there. And he makes no response. Yeah, Mahogany heads over there. Okay. Yeah, I'll approach. And crouches down. Yeah. When you crouch hey, down, you, all right? you can very faintly hear the old man snoring. He's very sleepy. I don't think it's a good deed to wake people. Unless he's been here, unless he's been sleeping here for a while. Maybe he's tired. Maybe he knows what the stones are. You could ask him. Yeah, but that would be doing waking him up in order to fulfill our questions, which I'm pretty sure is a bad deed. It's not a bad deed to wake somebody up. It's not like not hurting him. Maybe he has questions for us. Yeah, maybe he wants maybe he wants something from us. He just doesn't know that we're here because he's not awake. All right, I don't understand good enough. You're gonna someone's gonna have to do this. <laughs> All right, right. We'll we'll like put a hand on the old man's like area where his shoulder should be. Make a dex check. Okay. Just a check? Yes. Okay. Uh, 19. 19. As you go to move into the old man, he reaches out to grab your wrist. But you won the dex check context, contest, so you're a, you get to decide how to respond to this situation. He's going to um, snap your wrist out of the air, basically. I'll, I'll pull back and let said, oh, you're awake. Oh, so we didn't wake him up. All right. Ne neutral deed. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do? And the old man begins to speak in a very labored and haggard voice. Uh, but he's speaking a language that none of you have heard before. I can understand it, though. Yeah, and Mahogany turns towards Liberation. Liberation. What he's saying is he's kind of speaking to himself. And what he's saying is kind of a rumination on whether or not any of you deserve to cross his bridge. He's kind of like he's mulling it over, speaking his thoughts out loud. I'll translate for the rest of the group. Ask him if he would prefer we didn't cross his bridge. Do you not want us to cross the bridge? I'll ask him. And the old man opens his eyes, and he doesn't have eyes the way you all do. He just has orbs of light in his face, extremely bright. And he looks across over at all five of you. And then he asks in common so that you all understand. Mm -hmm. He asks, which of you disrupted his winds and rain? Nah, four raises his hand. And then he looks at the other four of you and say, would you abandon your friend and cross the bridge without him? No. no. Nobody, real friends don't abandon each other. And then Keeling he ruminates to himself again. Keelan, go ahead. Keeling gives a shifty-eyed glance to everybody. <laughs> like, we just met this guy, but... <laughs> All right. He ruminates to himself again in this language that only liberation can understand. And what he's saying, he seems conflicted. He can tell that Nath is a good person and deserves to cross the bridge just by looking at him. However, he did commit a grievous sin. And if you all are traveling with him, that makes you sinners as well. And after he comes to a decision, he says, Then you will convince me that this man is good, 
or you will all five of you turn away. And then he closes his eyes again. Is there something I can do to make up for disrupting his storm? I'm asking uh, Liberation. Yeah, I'll, I'll pose the question to him. I think he can understand this, guys. You're speaking common. He says that only the good and righteous may set foot on this bridge. That he is right. the appointed yeah. guardian. Riot will has an argument to make about nastiness. Okay. Riot will tell this old man of how though Nath is both lawful and good, he always he always does good over law. When when something when when the greater good needs to be served and it doesn't serve the laws of wherever he is, he unhesitatingly breaks the law to do that. Because good is more important to him than anything else. Is this something Riot actually believes? This is something Okay, Riot has like sort of observed this uh -huh. and is sort of like putting the screws to Nath at the same time she's convincing the old man. Okay. <laughs> That's a bit of an oversimplification. So the question is, is is this a full truth or is this a half truth? Does it matter if Riot believes it or if it, Nath believes it? it? It matters if Riot believes it right now. Okay. If does she believe what she's saying right now? I'm, Riot probably doesn't fully believe it. I mean, it's what she's observed, but she knows Nath and knows that that's probably not a fully accurate description of what he believes. Riot, make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. The man's eyes, when Riot speaks on Nath's behalf, the old man's eyes pop open again, and he's staring very intently at Riot. How'd that save do? 18. 18? Mm -hmm. You feel... Are you wearing your mind of your ring of mind shielding at the moment? I don't have any more. Not got it. Oh, that's right. <laughs> okay. Uh, you feel in your mind. At first, it feels like the same sensation you get anytime somebody's probing your mind with detect thoughts or even like message or something like that. But there's almost like an aftertaste to it, if that makes any sense. Like the magic seems familiar, but whoa, there's a weird burn on it. It's a little too spicy. And you realize your thoughts are very immediately begin filling up with all of the quote unquote bad things you've done in your life. As this man continues to stare at you with his eyes. I have a question real quick. Okay. Is it the bad things that objectively Riot has done or is it the bad things that Riot thinks were bad things that Riot has done? Both. Both things that Riot has done that she knows were bad and things that she doesn't think is bad, but she knows that the society around her okay. would think are bad. The man then stands up and it takes a minute to do this. He does it with great difficulty. And then he speaks again in common and says, I have great reservations allowing any of you to travel this bridge. Okay, no, look, I got one. I got one. He has got me into a lot of personal trouble helping <laughs> others. And he addresses Mahogany, but does not take his eyes off Riot. He says that your friend will have his turn to present a case. But first he has to determine what to do about the Typhling. What do you mean what to do about the Typhling? And he asks Riot, mm -hmm. have you ever knowingly committed a wicked act? Now, you can... You're able to lie. You pass the save. You're able yeah. to tell him a mistruth here if you want. But looking at this man and his extremely radiant eyes, you have the 
You have the feeling that he can see through any deception. He'll know if you don't tell him the truth. Have I ever committed a wicked act? Well, I've done some things I'm not proud of. You know, things that seemed like they were the right thing to do at the time, but then when I thought that later, I realized, now nah, that wasn't that wasn't good. He asks if your pride is an element of wickedness. Does your pride drive you to do these things? And then you change your mind afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds right. He says, what is the most wicked thing you have done? Hmm. I think you would probably go back to that operation that she did with the, the Doom Guard. Remember, she has, she has that contact at the Doom Guard, and the reason he has is because there was this thing that a joint operation between the Doom Guard and her and the uh, anarchist cell she was in at the time to like destroy the foundations of some buildings. I don't remember exactly what it was. It was rampant destruction of life and property. Yeah, something like that. So and, did- like, and back in those days, I think Riot was a different kind of anarchist than she is now. You know, that there's a lot of, like, in every faction, there's a bunch of people who approach the philosophy different. Mm-hmm. Riot approached the philosophy of anarchy differently than, than she does now. Like, she used to approach it with a stick of dynamite? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, when you, do you tell this story to the man? Yeah. And, like, what's your emotional state as you do? Just matter of fact, just laying out, laying it out, or... Like, like are you kind broken regret- up about it? A little broken up, a little regretful about it. The rest of you watching this man, you can tell that he's listening very intently. And when Riot is finished telling the story, he says that he senses that you take no joy or solace in the misery that you have caused. And he says, by this, I can tell that you are a good soul. And he bids you to approach him. Uh, And Riot does. And he, you see his arms move out, just these bony, stickly limbs coming out of his robes uh, and the skin on his hands is just a pale milky white almost a deathly pallor very stark contrast to the very colorful robes and hair that he has and he holds his arms out and awaits your embrace eh, like him a hug something is about to happen to you mm-hmm. that I will give you a saving throw if you want it do I get to know what it is? Nope. Nope. Okay. <laughs> you is can it either al- you can either allow it to come over you, or you can make the saving throw. The uh, I really don't want my alignment to change again. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's okay, Nick. I'm rolling up a new character as we speak. So <laughs> Every, every everybody's <laughs> neutral good on the other side of this bridge. Mahogany's got three hundred. <laughs> gold and diamond dust on tap. <laughs> <laughs> so, he came to this plane prepared. Would you like to make a a charisma save or not? Oh god, it's charisma save? Yes. This is so easy for me. Oh. <laughs> uh... No, I'll, I'll roll with it. Just roll with it? Happens. Okay. And as you're embracing, he speaks into your mind. And he tells you that you have permission to cross the bridge. Okay. And what else? That's it. He just he's giving you permission. Okay. Then he turns his attention to mahogany. Yeah. And I actually I do know mahogany's alignment. Ooh, this is going to go badly. Oh, mahogany's he's, neutral. He's he's not he's not even a little bit good. No. 
He looks you up and down. Are you wearing cipher colors? Yeah. Always. And he asks... Rather, he tells you that in the past, there have been many who have tried to come across this bridge, who had business on one side or the other, claiming to be members of your order. And he's seen this sigil being warred by hundreds of people during his tenure here. And he says to you, what currency do you think that symbol you wear buys with me? It shouldn't buy you any. We're a neutral faction. He asks you, why should he suffer the... Why should he suffer your neutral faction on his glorious plane of Elysium? Because if you're going to make other people act the exact same way you do, that's not a good act. That's an evil act. And actually, I have something written down here that I'd like to say. Uh-oh. Because uh, he's, it's He's prepared it's something... remarks. No, yeah, I had a prepared thing here for the end of the session when you asked what Mahogany's learned. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Mahogany says the the thing that I've been thinking about since I entered this plane is that doing good deeds doesn't make someone good it's just you know helping others it's it's a lot of the time it's doing the right thing but doing evil deeds does make someone evil and I think because of that that altering and changing the thoughts of those around you is more aligned with evil than good. He asks if you've ever come across a devil in your journeys. Mahogany will nod. And he says, suppose one of these creatures came to my glorious plane of Elysium. And during its tenure here, committed good acts and brought cheer to all of those around it. Helped Mm -hmm. the needy aided the sick, used its great magical prowess for the advancement of the cause of good during its journey. If this creature arrived at my bridge, should I allow it to cross? Does the bridge only permit good people to cross? He says I only permit good people to cross. It's not a feature of the bridge? Then in that case, you probably should. I don't see how this bridge belongs to you any more than the rest of the plane does. And you can see that your answer displeases him. (laughs) He then turns to Nath. And he says... he He asks Nath if he's ever knowingly committed a wicked act. Yes, primarily in my youth, but... He says, what is the most wicked thing you have done? Um, I believe when I was very young, probably the most wicked thing I had ever done would be uh, killing a man I could have easily incapacitated in self-defense. You are Liberation, looks a, Liberation looks a little wide-eyed at that. Liberation has killed so many people. I know, but it's like, it doesn't seem like Nath is the kind of guy who would just kill somebody in cold blood. Like, he'd expect that from Keely, but not from No, Nath. he said in self-defense. Oh. It wasn't in cold blood, if that, oh. if, if you're actually voicing oh, this. Concern. Listen, we'll get to Keely. <laughs> 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 I'm really disappointed that the dude didn't read my mind because Mahogany's plan is already to argue for those three people to cross and then load up Keeling and fly over the canyon rather than cross the bridge. <laughs> sure that's how at least it works. Yeah, we'll see. we'll see. Hey, this guy said he doesn't want non-good people to cross the bridge. In Mahogany's mind, that means... <laughs> That crossing it while not being good would be evil. So he should fly over the castle. <laughs> so, when Nath is telling the story about this man that he's killed in self defense, what's his demeanor? Solo. Very regretful. Okay. I mean, basically, at the time, he uh, 
he had plenty of spells that would have, you know, res resulted in him being able to be apprehended and be brought into the proper authorities. But as an act, rash act, Nath just blew him away with his strongest evocation. <laughs> I used six disintegrates instead of five. <laughs> <laughs> he says, he, or he asks rather, uh, you're a soldier. Uh, more of a bodyguard, but sure. Make a wisdom saving throw. Nine. How strongly <laughs> does Nath identify as a member of the Harmonium back on his home plane? On his home plane, very strongly. He then asks a probing question. He says, you don't see yourself as a soldier. I see myself as a problem solver in the most part. I think war is usually the worst possible outcome of a situation, so I generally look to avoid it. Uh, if given orders directly, yes. At the end of the day, I would be a soldier, though. With my specific skill set, I try and avoid open conflict like that. It's hideously wasteful and destructive. And if a superior officer orders you to do something... Necessary, but detestable. What is your response to the orders? I mean, I would use my own judgment, as I always do. And if I agree that it's necessary, but detestable, I would do it. Many times I've been given such orders and have not agreed. And I've always made it a point to work for people whose orders I can trust. He asks if you absolve yourself of any guilt by telling yourself that... You were only following orders. Not guilt. Perhaps lawful repercussions. One does after, or I'll have to watch oneself if they're in a society that runs by law, and I obviously try and do things where I can by the book, but personal guilt? No, not so much. He says he can tell that you are a good man, but very conflicted. There is a storm inside your mind. And he opens out his arms and bids you approach. All right, I'll walk over to him. And I'm going to give you the same option. Something's about to happen to you, and you can either make the charisma save or forfeit it. I mean, it's a charisma save. It doesn't really matter either way, so I'll just flick up, let it go. Okay. <laughs> he then turns to liberation. Okay. And he looks at you for a long time. Almost a full minute. Go ahead and make a wisdom saving throw. Hands in his pockets. Kind of shuffling your feet, looking guilty as hell. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. Duke's not here. <laughs> that is a 14, I think. 14? Uh, yeah, 14. Okay. He says that he can tell you work very hard. You've dedicated your life to alleviating the suffering of others. And he says that this is commendable. And he holds out his arms and bids you approach. I'll do the same. I'll, I'll follow suit with the rest of the group. Okay. You're going to want to make the save or forfeit it. I'll willingly fail the save. <coughs> This is going to get really interesting. <laughs> wow. I was expecting a lot more. I was I expecting getting grilled a lot. I think, I think you guys were lulled into a false sense of security by nothing immediately happening to Riot. <laughs> <laughs> he then turns to Keelian. And for the first time, you see his face break into a scowl. Keelan crosses his arms. And he says, You wear the skin of a celestial creature. But you do not act like one. You do not bring light or joy to people. What then do you bring?
I bring misery, sadness, pain, death. I know what I am. He bids you to look behind you at the obsidian markers that you've crossed. And Keelian obliges. He says, what you're looking at are the remains of evil people who have been denied my crossing, who thought they could bring arms and violence against me, who thought that they could bully or force their way through my guardianship. Is this where I die then? He says he is but an old and feeble man. His back isn't what it used to be. However, he has tools here. If you would be so kind as to march a hundred yards or so out and dig a hole for yourself while he deals with your final companion. Helium looks at Mahogany. No, I think you should deal with us together. And then he looks back at Mahogany. What are the other three of you doing? Are you waiting for them or are you crossing? Right, I'm like started, started to cross and then is, is like a few steps onto the bridge and is now waiting to see what's happening. Okay. Liberation hasn't left anyone else behind. He's standing right there. Nath is at the foot of the bridge, but he hasn't made, stepped onto it yet. And the old man asks Mahogany, mm -hmm. is that what I should do? Treat the two of you as one entity? You live or die together? You cross or don't together? Mahogany nods. 